Alex here from the Four Week Natural, here with the geese in the Hyde Park in London, somewhere in the centre near Buckingham Palace. Today I am talking to you about the definition and the functional definition and how to flirt. Flirting, this common topic that they talk about in men's magazines, women's magazines, a very misunderstood topic. And I want to talk to you about the way that I teach it so that my students, so that, so that you can understand what it is, how to do it, how to avoid the mistakes, how to start implementing it, what to look out for, and how to execute it. So we've got a lot to talk about. We're doing a bit of a deep dive in this content vlog. So let's begin. There are these kind of common topics in, in modern society called flirting and chemistry and the spark. Now, what are those things, flirting, chemistry and the spark? Well, basically kind of to, to sum it up, it's that you can speak with confidence and indifference uh, to the girl that you might be interested in, in a way that is a bit more exciting than normal because you're excited about that person. Speaking with confidence and spark and flair, using a kind of more colourful uh, language and more sexual topics, showing interest in your topics of conversation, that that comes from you being confident enough with yourself to use uh, more powerful language when talking to chicks. Um, but it can also come from general indifference. If you're used to dating. Uh, or have experienced dating girls that you're attracted to, girls that you're comfortable with. If you're a confident guy who's had a lot of experience in dating, then you can generally speak more colorfully. If you haven't had a lot of experience uh, with dating and, and girls generally tend to scare you or you have approach anxiety, then you, you're likely to be very hesitant to say more colorful things. Now, when I say those colorful things, what do I mean by that, okay? Uh, imagine, first of all, like imagine if uh, you're talking to a girl and she's really, she, she's attractive to you, to your subjective opinion, and you become kind of stifled and scared and you are kind of restricted in what you can say. You really seize up and you don't know how to speak properly. Well, that's called, you know, playing it safe, um, worried about losing the interaction, worried about making a bad impression. And generally you tend to make what we call safe conversation, right? So safe conversation is where you don't say anything that could possibly risk embarrassing yourself, risk showing your excitement towards the girl, your interest, your curiosity towards the girl, your attraction. And by the way, you shouldn't really be attracted to a girl or interested to a girl from, from the very beginning. You can be curious, super curious, but there's no way that you will know if you like her until you get to know her. So. It starts with curiosity rather than making the decision that you really like this person. Now, for example, if you're having this kind of like safe conversation, the non-flirting, non-chemistry, non-spark conversation, you're generally going to talk about things that are very safe, like where are you from, what do you do, I do this, how's the weather. You're not going to be very colorful or expressive with your language. But imagine like if this is the, the safe zone, one tier out, there's more of a edgy zone where you could say, you look lovely, um, you make me nervous, or you could say more playful, silly things, uh, flirty type things like, I'm super cool, I'm strong in the gym, I've got a high IQ. You can say teasing things, right? And that would be, um, you're crazy, my parents are not gonna love you, my parents are gonna love you. These things can take all different types of flavors, but when you start amping up the conversation, when you say things that are a little bit playful and edgy, as opposed to business-like, safe and non-risk, that's when you actually start to become flirty, right? The thing is, most people don't have the, the kind of the balls or the confidence or the self-assurance to, to say the edgy things because as soon as you say something like, uh, oh my goodness, you're, you're crazy. Oh my goodness, you're so gorgeous, you're so beautiful. To bring those things up in the conversation, you worry about the repercussions. Basically, you worry about losing the attention of that girl or what it's gonna mean or are you gonna get rejected? So if you don't have the confidence to endure the risk of rejection, then you're gonna have safe conversation. You're not gonna have the chemistry flirting spark type conversation and your flirting is not gonna exist. Now, 
it doesn't just start with that. It's actually a flirting loop. You get into this flirting loop, okay? It's easy enough to understand, and it generally comes out that you start using a wider range of expressions, edgier expressions, that risk either embarrassing yourself or risking rejection or, or calling to consciousness that you're kind of interested in the person in front of you, which of course risks rejection. And, and then you're gonna get some pushback. You're gonna get what we classically call a test. So if you say to the girl, oh my goodness, you look absolutely stunning this evening, she might give you some pushback in a traditional movie type sense. She might say, um, you say that to all the girls and put you under a bit of pressure. Well, that's the flirting loop. And she's almost kind of like setting you up to, to have a bit of banter and, and start the, the, the psychological attraction game where you start flirting and having fun wordplay with one another. So let's break that down. I'm standing out here in this autumn field of orange here by the horse guards in, in London. So back to, the, back to the flirting. Now, not only do you need to be the one to start with the playful stuff, you need to be brave enough or risky enough to, t to, to say things that might get you judged or rejected or give you a bit of playful pushback, you then, you need to, you need to anticipate that there is gonna be pushback. And that's how flirting works. That's, that's a flirting loop, as we call it. Not just flirting, as they would call it in pop culture, it's a flirting loop. So you, you can say something a bit playful or provocative or vulnerable or serious or silly. There's kind of these quadrants and then you're always gonna get play, uh, pushback. And it can be things like, you're just trying to impress me, you're like all the other guys, why are you saying that to me? Uh, are you just trying to get me into bed? Uh, you're so full of yourself. And, and that's where you have a really good chance to even amp up the flirting. Now, you gotta understand that from man t toward woman flirting, this channel is kind of a heterosexual uh, man, guys talking to girls type of channel. When you're doing this kind of flirting, it's this psychologically stimulating mentally exciting and, and, and then triggering visceral excitement in the girls that you're talking to. What it says about you as a guy, if you can have the, the bravery, the courage or the balls to say some either intentful or complimentary or challenging or vulnerable things, it says that you're confident enough that you're willing to risk losing that individual girl so that you could you're happy to kind of let her go because you know that you can't control anybody anyway and that you have a sense of abundance and you're not stressed about losing that one opportunity because you're sure that you'll find another opportunity again in the future. Now what that communicates to the girl is that he is a guy who has a sense of choice and because he has a sense of choice, she, the girl doesn't feel the burden of responsibility of you falling in love with her and then you being a kind of a lonely guy who only had one chance with her as one girl, which is no fun for her at all. So showing that you're able to, to risk rejection essentially by kind of having the courage to, to tell her how you feel, which is curiosity, not intent, not desire to get laid, not to overcome your sexual scarcity, just to, you know, to build interactions, to, to create relationships, that is the essence of flirting. Now, girls can do this a little bit, but they do it a lot more subtly. I think, and I'm just, just speculating here, this is what I've observed. Girls aren't great at starting flirting as, as, as guys are. They wanna be a lot more subtle about it. They wanna give a hint and hope the guy picks up on it because one of the most kind of attractive things for a, one of the most important things for a girl during the flirting process, the, the courtship process, is that she feels like she's selected by a guy with choice. That she's getting attention from a person whose attention is valuable. So if, if a girl just walks up to a guy and starts flirting, giving you know body language or being suggestive or seductive, then it prompts the guy a little bit too easily and she doesn't then, she's not then able to, to assess whether that guy had the confidence in the first place to actually open his mouth, take a risk, start the flirting loop happening. So that's why girls don't do it. They will give some hints. They do things like in a classic bar situation, they might bump into you at the bar, make eye contact, um, dance up with you. Uh, but basically eye contact and bumping into you is the, is the most common ones. Sometimes they'll come and chat to you, which is, which is something. Um, but otherwise, remember that 
in, in a scientific, uh, very traditional sense, men are attracted to aesthetic traits in a very traditional biological sense. And in a very traditional sense, women are attracted to behavior. And behavior and, and strength of character is only revealed when it's put to the test. If a girl you know, looks at, say, 15 different guys in the bar who are hygienic, she has the potential to be attracted to any one of those 15 guys. But not all of those 15 guys in the bar will actually have the courage to take verbal risks, have a bit of fun, give the girl a compliment, show his vulnerability, be a little bit silly, and things like that. So she can't really be the instigator. She needs to set up a situation where she can be chased or have the guy basically do the propositioning. She can do the tests and then the game can go to the next level. Now, with, with her kind of doing the tests and you instigating a more fun type of conversation, that then sets a whole precedent for a fun conversation that if you're the one hosting the, the interaction, if you're the guy who's trying to meet and pick up the girl, you need to be the one to set a precedent for a fun, low expectation conversation. I think what you fail to realize, and always I have to be careful with my language here, that if you go to, to meet up with girls in a social place or in the, in the dating game, in the courting game, bar, club, party, dinner, something like that, uh, people judge themselves and each other so aggressively that it's very difficult for them to take a risk for themselves. And a lot of guys, you fail to realize how, how harshly and how aggressively um, girls judge themselves. They're, they're incredibly hard on themselves and have incredible expectations that they're constantly being surrounded by in the media, social media, Instagram, their friends. And girls in the dating game, uh, they have a lot of criticism. They get a lot of criticism from their friends, from themselves, from their ex-boyfriends. And that kind of criticism is, is often at the forefront of their mind when they go out and they're in a situation where they might meet guys who they want to date or maybe get to know or things like that. So imagine even if you're on a Tinder date, the girl might come to the date and she may have a bit of personality, but a lot of her personality is going to be suppressed because of the consciousness of criticism or judgment, self-consciousness um, that, that comes when she's meeting guys or when she's putting herself out there and taking an emotional risk. So what I'm saying is that Girls are infinitely more emotionally intelligent than men, right? It's kind of safe to say that. Uh, but men, be, because we're not as socially intelligent, we're a bit more blunt, where we, we don't feel pain of rejection as much as girls do in a very traditional sense. Because we don't feel as much pain of rejection, that allows us to be the ones to take a little more risk in conversation. And kind of that, that goes back to the point that I said before that a girl really is attracted when she knows that a man with a sense of choice is making an effort or taking a risk for her. You think about classic movies like The Notebook where the guy takes the big risk to get, to get the girl. So if you know, you're talking to a girl and it can be a Tinder date or a party or at an bar or a club and you can say something a bit playful or provocative, and I'm just gonna give you some garden variety, social media safe examples here. You can say things like, um, you're stunning, which is a genuine, safe, but more extreme compliment. Something funny and silly, something serious and silly. Uh, you could say, oh my God, my mother's gonna absolutely love you, which is a kind of a playful expression. You'll, you'll fit into my family perfectly. A negative tease would be the same kind of line, like, you can, you can say to her, oh my God, my, my family, I don't know if my family is going to like you. That's a playful expression. But you can also say the same, you can also use the same type of phrase and use self-deprecation, which is negative silly, which is, uh, I'm sure your family is going to hate me. Or you can do something kind of vulnerable, which is negative serious. Uh, and that would be, uh, you make me super nervous. So if you say any of these types of things, and there are a million examples, and if we watch... Um, if you watch modern movies, modern romantic comedies, there's a lot of these types of examples used all the time that you may not have the courage or balls or uh, self-confidence enough to use to make the conversation to go from plain and basic and business-like to be a flirty conversation. The point that I'm making here is that if you can 
say something like, oh my God, your family's gonna hate me. Oh my God, my, my mother's gonna absolutely adore you. She's gonna suffocate you with love. Saying something playful, which isn't grounded in reality, which is just to kind of open up the conversation. Because the girl's generally more self-conscious because they're infinitely more socially intelligent than men are, by you setting the precedent of saying something a little funny, a little silly, adding a bit more emotion to the conversation, then it kind of sets a precedent where she can open up and say the same kinds of things. But you have to go first, especially if you're the guy watching the pickup video, learning how to, to talk to more girls, right? You have to be the host of the interaction to make these things happen. And the thing is, that, that girl's, her mind will be racing about, what does this mean? What could happen next? What does he think of me? Am I, am I making a good impression? I'm attracted to this guy. I feel, I, I feel like I wanna be intimate with this guy. So all of that is bubbling up inside of her mind. She, she's thinking these things, worrying about these things, and she does want to talk about it. But you almost need to go first uh, to open up these things so that she can. I think in a good city, the modern woman, she knows that she needs to give the guy a bit of a kick in the ass to get him talking because guys generally are blunter objects. Right? We're blunter objects, but the modern man is much more aware of the, the rights and wrongs in the dating game than was even the awareness seven or eight years ago when it was quite ignorant compared to the Me Too movement and things like that. So I just want you to be aware that as the guy, you've got to be the one to take those risks, to, to start with a, a bigger compliment, to share your feelings, to say something that you might risk embarrassing yourself. But then comes the tests and you get, you get these tests and you have this kind of like, escalating uh, verbal combat, which is super exciting. And that's the re really the most attractive thing to a girl. So when it comes to like sparks and chemistry and, and flirting, that, that's when you're really kind of having a go at each other back and forth in a very playful way. And that is verbal, mental, psychological uh, foreplay, basically challenging one another, complimenting one, one another. It, it also comes in the form of uh, giving attention and taking ten attention away. And both men and women will do this in a playful way because they're confident and uh, willing to kind of risk rejection. They like the roller coaster of it all. It's all very mentally stimulating, which leads to emotional stimulation, which in the, the game of dating and getting to know one another foreplay and pickup that then can lead to the intimacy uh, uh, interaction right so you know hooking up getting together or whatever it might be beautiful scene but we've got some garbage trucks driving around here so so let me just I'll bring it all back now we'll tie it all together so when it comes to flirting it it all comes down you know if you're a guy watching this channel it all comes down to your ability to to start being more colorful with your language. And if you can do that, then you're gonna be tested. Now, I've gotta say, if you are gonna give a girl a big compliment or tease or use self-deprecating humor or uh, use self-aggrandizing ridiculous statements, which is a good form of flirting, um, you can't just kind of deliver the line and then say, ha, huh, what do you think of that amazing thing that I've just said and hope that she loves the joke and she keeps the conversation going. It's not like you're telling a joke, it's you embed it into conversation and you might say that more edgy thing, but then you switch back to the more normal conversation. Where are you from? What are you doing? So a good example of flirting, and I'm just going to use a very basic, politically correct version on the internet here. Um, you might be saying, oh, where are you from? What are you doing? You're the kind of person who my parents would hate, uh, but my friends would really like you. Uh, so what's your career? What part of the city do you live in? I have a company, I do this, I do that. So you just embed that little barb, that little emotional spike to make things a little interesting um, and anticipate that it's gonna get the pushback. Don't then drop that line which you identify as a flirt or a spark or chemistry and then hope that she's gonna say, oh my God, you're incredible. You've made me happy, let's go home together. Let's, let's be together. It doesn't work that way. It's not joke telling. It's embedding it into the conversation. But to be able to flirt, to be good at the, the chemistry and the spark, it needs to be clear to the person that you're talking to that you have the indifference and the self-confidence, the self-assuredness that you can take a couple of verbal risks where you might embarrass yourself or risk rejection um, 
because that that shows that you're a man with options, a man with with abundance, and a confident guy who who is cooler under pressure than the girl. You might have a, a sense of selection of women, and the thing that makes the girl really attracted to you is that she feels that she's chosen by a guy who's competent, uh, and she's chosen by a man with choice. She's she's favored by an authority who's a legitimate authority and your, your authority or your social confidence or your personal confidence that can only be verified and validated when it's called into question when it's tested and when the pushback is given but that that game of pushback it's a beautiful thing that's the flirting loop you use colorful language that's tasteful that's not too aggressive that's not creepy or anything like that and i you know i I worry about even using any of these examples on the internet here because all of them can be taken out of context. On the live coaching, we talk about a lot of them, which are, you know, kind of private and contextual and things like that. And things escalate. And it, you can almost have like this, it, your conversation might actually appear very, very disagreeable. Um, you're crazy, you're crazy, you're crazy. Oh my God, I hate you. Oh my God, I hate you too. The back and the forth. And then you say, do you want to share a taxi home together? And she might say no and, and agree to come with you and then say, yes, I do consent to coming in a taxi home with you. And, you know, in this day and age, if you're having that kind of flirty conversation, you might have to then stop and say, hey, we've been flirting, we've been pretty playful with our language, but I, I just want to be clear here that I am actually really into you and I'm really interested in getting to know you further. Do you want to hang out? Do you want to do something? Am I crossing a line here? You have to remember these things in the day and age of consent, right? So... It, that's that's what it is to have chemistry and you'll remember some people in your life who you had chemistry with and maybe there were people who you were indifferent towards and because you're indifferent you were confident enough or indifferent enough to actually take those risks and it was always a fun flirty playful conversation but you may have seized up to, to have that kind of fun conversation when you spoke to other people who you were re really worried about the impression you would make with them or you really hoped to have a more flirty relationship with them and you got stifled because you couldn't do it. Well, now hopefully that you've got a better understanding of what you're supposed to do and what the mechanics of it looks like, what the definition is, when it comes to that next situation, you can be flirty and you can use a wide range of flirts positive, negative, silly, serious questions, statements directed towards her, directed towards you. Keep it tasteful, obviously, I can't say it enough. And then you can become a flirty kind of guy and you get good at it. Have the flirt, generate the test, respond to the test, mentally and emotionally and viscerally escalate things and that's gonna make you an attractive kind of guy because you can have attractive types of conversation because you're communicating that you don't have fear of loss, that you do have a sense of abundant abundance and you're choosing the girl coming from a position of choice, a guy who's willing to not be favored by everybody uh, and if that girl doesn't happen to like you for whatever reason, if she's unavailable, if she doesn't favor you for her own personal reasons, that you can live with that and go and find somebody else, that's abundance. And that's the attractive thing that girls like. And that's what it all comes down to. But that answers, that That begs the question. You know, I, I respond to every one of the, uh, the comments, by the way. The question is, what stops you from being flirty with girls you like as opposed to girls that don't really bother you too much? What do you think it is that actually stops you? Do you think it's fear? self-consciousness, you, you, you don't want to possibly lose an opportunity. As you can tell, you're gonna lose the opportunity if you don't do anything. So I'm interested to hear like, what do you guys think holds you back from flirting and having chemistry and creating this flirting loop? Or is it something in the mechanics? You don't know how to beat the tests or you don't know the lines to use to instigate the flirting, you know? My job as the, the dating coach here is to give you a million different lines and techniques to use to drive the conversation. So. In the next video, the long-awaited first publication of the range of emotions, okay? And I'm going to tell you all about the positive, negative, silly, serious, you, me, question, answer, statement, all of that stuff. So you've got a million lines to help to channel your personality and to use expressions that fall into these brackets of a bit more exciting than safe and boring but not too over the top that it would be distasteful or aggressive or off-putting or uh, po too polarizing, right? That is a fine art that I want to speak to you about in the next 
deep dive content video just like this one. Anyway, if you like this video, you know, give it the old thumbs up, you know, leave a comment and uh, welcome to the channel if you've not been here before. Give it a subscribe and as I said, it's our duty to respond to each and every one of the comments. I want you to be aware though, as cold as it is here in the nice London, I'll just let that all come into focus again. I only go to the United States once a year, right? And I'm going to Miami in February. Playa del Carmen in Mexico before that in January, but I believe that one's already sold out, or maybe there's two positions left. And I'm gonna be going to Me Miami in February. I, Alex, the most experienced dating coach in the history of mankind, legitimately, um, I'm only teaching nine students in the United States this year. Then I'm going to Melbourne, which is almost sold out. The first one's sold out, the second one's almost sold out as well. And then I'm doing two programs in Croatia in, as we do for the seventh year in a row, uh, even through COVID, uh, in June and July, 2022. So just wanted to let you know that that is my schedule. And then after those Croatian programs, I am lightening my load, right? I am only gonna take on about say 36 to 54 students per year for live coaching because I do have other interests and I've only been coaching back to back to make up for the demand that's been happening because of the pandemic. So check it out, apply to sign up and you understand that when you apply to join the program, I need to vet each and every one of you. And one of the most important things about the Four Week Natural program itself is that you're gonna be put together with a group of guys that I've personally assessed and if it's in a place like Miami or the United States, that you're gonna be with a group of eight other guys who are gonna be of high standard, who are good communicators, who are confident, who are humble, and you can go through the journey with them. And these, these programs, man, they are just, they are a blast, they are a party. They bring together interesting characters from all over the world for one purpose, for five weekends, and it's just magical to see the way that everybody changes together, gets into relationships, has incredible party experiences. It's, it's a party, guys. So sign up for the limited amount of places for this highly exclusive coaching program. That's on fourweeknatural.com uh, slash apply dash now, and then you can sign up to work with me because I only do a limited amount of these things a year, and they're incredible, they're very immersive, and uh, as you can see, I love, I love this job and, and sharing this information with you. Goodbye from London. I'll speak to you again very soon.